Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Potomac and Chesapeake Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We are so excited that you have joined us to participate in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Stephanie, and I will be your facilitator for this session. Before we get started, just a few um, quick housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so please be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash P-C-A-C-A-C. And I would now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Arizona State University. All right, thank you so much. Perfect. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Sarah. I am the Mid-Atlantic Recruitment Coordinator for Arizona State University. I am based down in Norfolk, Virginia. So thanks so much for being here. So if you are unfamiliar with ASU, we are located in the Metro Phoenix area. Um, we are spread out all across the city. We actually have four campus locations in Phoenix. Um, Phoenix is a really exciting place to spend your college career. It's actually the fifth largest city in the country, which I did not know prior to working for ASU, but it's a huge metropolitan area. Really fun city to be a part of for your college career. Um, really great place for outdoor recreation, beautiful weather, average temperatures about 75 degrees. So you can't complain about that too much unless you're here in the summer when it is very hot, but you probably won't uh, face that extreme heat during your academic year. Um, really great place for arts and culture and athletics, outdoor recreation. So it's a very exciting place um, to attend college. So here are a few accolades that I always like to mention about the university. We um, have been ranked number one in the US for innovation for seven years now. We just got noticed that we're heading into our seventh year of winning that award, which is super exciting. Basically what this means to me personally is that we are always trying new things. We're always adding new degree programs and rethinking education and rethinking admission and scholarships and opportunities for our students. We're also ranked number four in the US for undergraduate education as well as first year experience. So what that should tell you is that students are coming to ASU, loving their first year, and then coming back to finish their degree with us. We have four campus locations um, in the Phoenix area, like I mentioned, and each campus is self-sustainable. So each campus has its own residence halls, its own academic advising resources. Um, some majors are only offered at a particular campus. So uh, majors like journalism and our health sciences and nursing will be based at our downtown Phoenix campus. Polytechnic campus is really known for its hands-on technical majors, um, engineering programs, flight and aviation. Our Tempe campus is our largest campus with um, over 52,000 students. The popular majors at Tempe would be things like education, engineering, College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, so anything from psychology to business to um, political science to biology. Um, and this is also where all of our athletics are held as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then last, we have the West Campus, definitely more of a liberal arts um, feel. It's a lot smaller in size, definitely more quiet, and has a little bit more interdisciplinary majors as well. So your major that you choose will dictate what campus you live on. So some majors, like I mentioned, journalism, nursing are campus specific, but other programs like business, engineering, um, psychology are offered at multiple campus locations. So that gives you the choice as a student to customize your ASU experience. If you want a smaller, more intimate campus community, West or Polytechnic might be a good fit. If you want that big traditional rah-rah college experience, then Tempe would be a good fit for you. Um, so we do this very intentionally. We place our campuses in locations that make sense. So tying it back to downtown Phoenix, it makes sense for our health science students and our journalism students to be right downtown in the fifth largest city in the country. Polytechnic campus is an old Air Force base, which is why our flight program is there. So we have the runways and our fleet of planes and a flight simulation studio. So wherever you will be studying is where you'll live for your first year. 
It's where all of your classes will be. So you don't have to leave your campus home if you don't want to. But the beauty of being an ASU student is you, that you have access to all four campuses and all the resources at each location. And all four campuses are connected uh, with an inner campus shuttle as well. So it's really easy to get around. So I'm going to talk a little bit about admission um, scholarships. We have a process called assured admission at ASU. So if you are meeting the criteria you see on the screen, you are guaranteed to be admitted into the university. So we look at uh, what we call course competency requirements. So these are the classes that you've taken in high school. And then one of the following, either a SAT or ACT test score or a 3.0 unweighted GPA or being in the top 25% of your graduating class. So if you're meeting all 16 of those classes and then one of those aptitude requirements, the test score, GPA, or class rank, you know you'll be admitted into the university. So we try and keep things very transparent, very clear cut. Um, so you'll look at this list and know if you'll be able to be admitted to the university or not. We are test optional for admission and scholarship. So if you have had trouble accessing a testing center or you're not planning on take the, taking the SAT or ACT, we are test optional for admission and scholarship purposes. All this being said, there are some degree programs that have a little bit higher admission criteria, like nursing, engineering, our uh, bachelor's of science and business programs do have a higher GPA requirement, but we do directly admit all students into a particular major. So we have a lot of really great um, visit opportunities, both virtually and in person. Um, we have really great information sessions to engage in, um, sessions about Barrett the Honors College and your own major might have their own academic virtual sessions as well, um, student panels throughout the year, you name it. Uh, we'd also love to welcome you to campus if you're planning on heading out west at any time in the next year or so. We are offering in-person uh, campus visits as well. Um, again, that's my information. My name is Sarah. I am your admission representative for all things ASU. Again, based kind of in your area and down in the Norfolk area. Um, so feel free to email me with any questions or if you want to be connected to another department um, or resource at ASU. I also do host one-on-one -on -one Zoom and phone appointments with students. Please feel free to reach out to meet with any questions and go Sun Devils. Hi, y'all. Let me just get my screen up here. And first, want to thank StriveScan for being our lovely host this evening. All right, we are ready to go. So first, welcome from the University of California, Riverside. I am Ashley Swingler, and I'm an international and out-of-state admission specialist based here in Pennsylvania. So I am in your time zone a little farther north, but I cover all of your territory up through Maine. So I have quite a lot of ground to cover both in person and virtually, but so excited to be here to discuss UCR with you. If you're not familiar with the University of California system, there are nine campuses across the state of California. UCR, University of California, Riverside being one of them. And think of us as sister schools. So you've probably heard of UCLA, UC Berkeley as being some of our most famous campuses, but we all have similar admission requirements and also similar philosophies and academic uh, rigor as well. Um, a part of our just philosophy, especially as UC Riverside, is being unique, committed, and real. This is our adopted tagline, and it really kind of defines who we are as a campus. Unique in the fact that we are the most diverse uh, UC out of the UC campuses, welcoming students from over 87 countries, um, having applicants from all 50 states, and not only um, really just drawing a diverse crowd from the whole state of California in terms of what our mission is. Committed in the fact that our faculty are so student-centered, our staff are student-centered, and we have very committed students um, really working on what that next step is in their life. And in fact, we for the third year in a row, have been ranked number one in social mobility in the United States, which is really exciting because this means we are accomplishing the goal of students really moving up in their lives and moving up in the world. And that's one of the reasons why students choose to go to college. You want to make a better life for yourself. You want to increase your earning potential or discover that next best thing that you're gonna get excited uh, to do and wake up to do every day. 
And so for us, that's what our number one ranking in social mobility means is that we're really helping the students achieve those goals over Harvard, Yale, top 30 public universities. We are the number one at doing this. We're also real. We want you to be your authentic self here at UC Riverside. So that means a culture of inclusion, of equity, really making sure that our students feel that home away from home. And that's important too, because you're thinking about going across the country for college. So we want to expose you to our over 100, uh, 500 clubs and organizations that we have on campus. We have Div 1 Sports. Actually, the city of Riverside is a truly exceptional place to have fun off campus as well. Uh, it's a cultural hub of the Inland Empire. We're about an hour and 15 to the east of Los Angeles, about an hour to the west of Palm Springs, and we're near Coachella as well. <laughs> you heard of that little, little town. Um, so there's really quite a landscape around our campus as well. In terms of elevating yourself, in terms of our academics, and this is one reason why you're attending this session today, is to learn about what your potential major may hold at each of our institutions. Well, here are seven different colleges. So you can take a look at, you know, maybe some of these have areas of interest for you. That QR code takes you to all of our majors. And I wish I had, uh, I have the challenge of presenting in six minutes, so I can't go through all 150. But I will say of note in our first year class, um, these five areas are the most popular bio, um, business economics, pre-business psychology, and actually undeclared. So there's two um, colleges that where you can go undeclared at UCR are Colleges of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences, as well as our College of Natural and Agricultural Sciences, which are very popular for students who may not want to commit right away to a major. Um, different majors of notes so were actually number two in the world for entomology, which I found super fascinating when I first came to UCR, the study of insects. Um, we actually have a strong plant biology program too. You can see behind me in my virtual background, this is actually an orange grove on our campus. We were founded as a citrus research station. So fun fact, citrus is a big deal around UCR. In fact, students can walk um, to class and pick citrus fruit off the tree, which I think is really cool. And of course we have fresh squeezed OJ stations around campus as well, but we are home to one of the largest collections of citrus uh, fruits in the world. We actually developed cuties on our campus and halos, really fun facts, um, but also recognizing that our engineering program is really strong. Uh, we have about 12 different majors in that school, five of which are five-year BS plus MS programs. Um, so that's a really great way to maximize your time. And also in our majors, uh, the School of Business is definitely something, business administration. We are actually AACSB accredited, which is the top accreditation of a business school. There's only 950 in the world with that accreditation and UCR is one of them. And we're only one of two UCR campuses that has a school of business. Um, so definitely something to keep in mind as you're looking at the UC general landscape. Also, we have a fantastic career center that focuses on getting students from their undergraduate to that next step, whether it's placement in graduate schools, both at UCR and across the country and world, or you want to find that dream job and opportunity after graduation. We connect students to companies all over California, as well as the world. I think in our virtual reality that we're living in right now, it's so much easier to do that. Um, so we really have irons in the fire all over the place to help students prepare for that next step. Also, fun fact, we just increased to 1 million square feet of research space this year, making it really easy to find opportunities for research. I just got my warning for 30 seconds, so I just want to quickly say that UCR has our own application, um, the UC application. If you have any questions, these are great links to um, you know, figure out what those admissions requirements are. We are test free meaning that you also do not have to submit a test. And our GPA is a 3.4. So just make sure you remember those things and you will be fine. The UC application is not that bad. Um, also follow some social media. We have some great content going on. I definitely suggest watching Chancellor Wilcox's parody of Ro Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood welcoming everybody campus today. That was pretty fun for me on Instagram to watch. And can't wait to see your questions in the chat. And thank you very much.
Hi, everyone. My name is Joyce. Uh, she, her, hers. I'm from the University of Utah, and I'll be presenting today. So let me just go ahead and share my screen. Uh, first off, I just want to say thank you so much, everyone, for um, coming out and watching the presentation. Of course, it'd be a lot more fun if you could do this in person, but of course, due to COVID, this is our next best option. So again, thank you so much. So I am the admissions counselor for the University of Utah of the DMV area, North South Carolina and West Virginia. I'm actually originally from Northern Virginia, the DC area and moved to Salt Lake City almost about one year ago. And the screen you're looking at right now, that is our main campus of Present Circle. So a little bit on the University of Utah, we're located in Salt Lake City, nestled right in between the Wasatch Mountains and downtown Salt Lake. We have about 24,000 undergraduate students, but our average class size is a little bit smaller, about 23, with that smaller student to faculty ratio. We are also a research one university, meaning that research is a top priority at our institution, and you can even start doing research as early as your first year if that's something that you wanted to do. Uh, so plenty of opportunities here at the U. And um, kind of where are we? Uh, that's a good question, especially for those of you all who are, where is Salt Lake City, where is Utah? A lot of people, or I and myself did not know if I moved out here. So we are kind of middle and west of the country. We have are located near five national parks. If any of you have been to Zion, um, Arches, Bryce, we are all located near there. We have seven world-class ski resorts. I believe our campus is probably the only campus where you can go to class drive 30 minutes and go skiing and then head back to your dorm. So it's very accessible here in our area. And again, we also do have access to downtown. So if you are not a nature skier person or don't really like to go hiking, no worries at all. We have plenty of opportunities for you to go shopping, explore the art, and just explore the growing city of Salt Lake City. Um, we are one of the top entrepreneurial cities in the country right now. Lots of opportunities for businesses and internships here in the area. And we are a destination state. So as I mentioned, we are located near the national parks and a lot of ski resorts, but also if you wanna go back home for the holidays or if you just kinda of wanna explore, we have an international airport and you get to get to go to any of these places within just a few hours. So our missions process, I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about it. Um, here at the University of Utah, we use a holistic review. So for you, if you are interested in coming into our programs, we actually have over um, 18 colleges and 150 programs, ranging anywhere from our top tier business school, uh, direct entry nursing program. Uh, we have a top engineering program in the state of Utah, College of Fine Arts. Um, entrepreneurship, again, is another big program here at the U. Uh, to go into submissions, we use something called a holistic review. So we'll take a look at your primary factors, such as your academic performance, which includes your GPA, classes, rigor as well. But we also take a look at secondary factors, um, such as your background, any extracurricular activities, volunteering, if you work at home, any jobs you have. Because here at the U, we understand that students, you know, as much as your GPA and your classes do matter, we do know that students are just a number. And there are many factors that affect you all as students and as human beings. So when we take a look at your application, we will take a look at all of that holistically. And on the right side, you can see some important dates um, that we will have coming up and then for information for you all to submit. And as for scholarships for funding for coming out to the U, uh, we awarded over $100 million in scholarships in the past year alone to students, our undergraduate students. So plenty of options for you to find funding. If you wanna to come to the U, we have both merit-based and need-based funding. So if you want to be eligible for any merit-based funding, there is no extra applications. All you need to do is apply by that December 1st date, and we will automatically consider you for any scholarships. And those are merit-based scholarships as well. For need-based follow scholarships, you will need to apply by that February 1st. But again, I usually tell students, you know, college is um, pretty expensive, as I'm sure as you all know, and especially going out of state can be more costly than staying in state. So this is where any scholarships, whether it's private or public or within the university or external is really important. So if you wanna be considered for any merit-based scholarships within the University of Utah to go to any of our programs or internships or clubs, please apply all your application on December 1st. We are actually on the Common App as well. So you can find us there or our homegrown app on our online website. All right, and lastly, I don't wanna go over the six minute mark. So this is my information. If you have any questions regarding 
you know, so Utah, any of the admissions or just what it's like to be a student or just moving out to Salt Lake City. Again, as I mentioned, I'm originally from the East Coast. We moved out here about a year ago. Um, I have loved it so far. Uh, there's nothing like just being having nature so accessible here. You can literally go hiking within 10 minutes, again, go skiing within 30 minutes, along with our plenty of internships here within the city of Salt Lake City, or we also have internships out in DC. So if you wanna come back out east or really anywhere over the country and over the world, and that goes with our learning broad opportunities as well. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out. This is my email and my phone number as well. And thank you so much. Hi all, thank you so much. I am next with the University of Oregon. So thanks so much for taking some time with us today. Um, a little bit of background for folks. We are located in Eugene, Oregon. So the second largest city in the state, just about two hours south of Portland. We are about three, three and a half hours from the California border and about an hour from the Pacific Ocean or the Cascade Mountains. So pretty centrally located, you have access to a lot of great um, nature areas, outdoors, you have access to recreation, um, the coast if you want to go surfing, all sorts of things um, located right here in our backyard, which is really great. We have just under 23,000 total students on our campus, and we're primarily focused on undergraduate students. So just under 19,000 students are going for their bachelor's degree. And as you can see on this map here, we have students coming from all 50 states and over 100 different countries. So the greener the state, the more students that are coming from that area. And you can see there's a pretty decent number of students coming from your area. I always tell folks, if you're looking to move uh, across the country, campus is, is a really great time to, or college is a really great time to do that because you have campus here, you have a landing pad, your roommates, your classes waiting, all of that. Um, when we're thinking about our physical campus, green is a, a theme that you'll hear about and see a lot. So we are located in the Willamette Valley very lush, very green area. Um, this here, right here, you can see our campus. We have our brand new track and field stadium, Autzen Stadium, not far. So our students will do the walk to Autzen where they walk over um, the river through this footbridge and then through a little wooded area to the stadium. And they'll say um, over the river and through the woods to Autzen we go. So lots of fun game day traditions that you'll see around campus. Something else that makes us notable is that we are a tier one research institution. So we're a member of the Association of American Universities. And with that, about 75% of our students are engaged in research at some point in time on our campus. It's not just the sciences that we always think of. We have students documenting native languages um, where there might only be a few people still speaking that language. We have folks documenting women in comics over time and what that looks like. Um, and so just know that it's not only the sciences that you can do research in. And that's something if you wanna get started, you can get started as early as your first term on campus. We have over 168 academic programs for you to choose from, everything from accounting, French, pharmacy, um, public relations, all of these different areas that you can study. And then from there, we have academic advisors that will help you if you're thinking about graduate school or you're thinking about um, any sort of career path forward after the UO, they're there to guide you through that as well. So you have a lot of support on campus as far as the academic programs. And then if you're not sure what your major is or you haven't decided quite yet, that's one of our most popular areas as well. So we have lots of folks here to help you decide. So you don't need to know right away. And then there's over 300 clubs and organizations on our campus. Uh, we have 20 division one sports, several club sports and um, intramural activities. There's things like the improv club. We have club water polo where they put on different floaties and they um, try to play against each other in the recreation center pool. There's all sorts of things to keep you engaged and entertained while you're on campus. There's also the Fifth Street Market downtown. So if you wanna go shopping, um, you could also hike Spencer Butte to get an entire view of the city. So you're gonna find lots of ways to stay involved on and off campus. And then some of the top employers of ducks are places like Adidas, Amazon, Apple, Nike. Um, but we have students who are going all over the country for internships, jobs after graduation, whatever that may be. And so just know you're not limited to these companies. These are just some that our students have been really excited about going to work at. You'll find there's career fairs, different um, support services for that. So you're definitely not on your own when you're looking for these internships and careers after graduation. And as far as applying to the University of Oregon, we're located on the Common Application, the Coalition Application, and our own Oregon application. We do a holistic review process. And what that means is we're considering the criteria here on the screen and then making a decision about your application. So we don't have minimums or cutoffs or anything of that nature. We're solely gonna look at 
this criteria here and then make that decision. Because as you've heard other universities say, we know that there's more to you than your grades and your schedule and all of that. We wanna know who you are as a person. We are test optional, so you do not have to submit test scores unless you would like to. And we're test free for scholarships as well. Our freshman deadlines to keep in mind are November 1st, which is our early action deadline. It's non-binding if you've heard other schools talking about that. You still have until May 1st to let us know if you'd like to come. Um, January 15 is our regular deadline. And the difference between the two is that if you apply by November 1st, you'll have a response by December 15. If you apply by January 15, you'll have a response by April 1st. So you can kind of see the difference there. And then February 15 is our document deadline. And again, May 1st is that exciting day when you get to tell schools and colleges if you're coming or not. And then there's a lot of different ways to explore the University of Oregon. We're open for in-person campus tours. We'll have um, a couple open house events, but then there's also virtual events you can watch on our website. There's virtual campus tours, um, a 360 experience of campus. If you wanna download that, that on your phone, there's quite a few options on this virtual.uoregon.edu website here that we have available for you. I would really encourage you to check that out. You can schedule an appointment with a student ambassador if you wanna chat with them, with an admissions counselor, whoever that may be, we're here to help you. And then if you have any questions at all, you can reach out to me. Um, my name is Vicki. I'm the contact for students in your area. So I'm always happy to chat with students, talk more about the University of Oregon, schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting, whatever that may be. Um, thank you so much. Hi everybody, my name is Adriana Ramirez. I am the admissions counselor from San Diego State University. So first and foremost, we are a California State University school located in the second largest city in California, beautiful, sunny San Diego. Uh, campus is very centrally located within the city of San Diego as well. We're about 10 to 15 minutes away from the airport, your nearest hiking trail to the closest beach. Um, so there's lots of things to do within San Diego. We are actually um, at this time one of the only universities located in San Diego with a trolley station on campus uh, that you can see in the picture here. And this does make it very convenient for students to get on and off campus. Now, these are some of the facts that we are known for making an impact nationwide. We are number one in California and number fifth in the nation for the number of students we send studying abroad. We are number 30 in Forbes, America's Best Value Colleges. And my favorite fact is we are top 35 nationwide for ethnic diversity on campus. This does translate into what we offer. Um, you know, like many of these other universities here today, we have over 300 and over 350 student organizations on campus, um, as well as other different clubs and sports to be involved. Now we are a big school. We have a little over 34,000 students total, a little under 30,000 of those students are undergrad. Now, other ways that we do like to promote student success are study abroad programs, our Weber Honors College. We are a research institution, so a lot of hands-on learning opportunities for our students and internship and job opportunities, as well as our career services department. Now, these are our majors. We have over 200 majors, specifically over 90 undergraduate majors to choose from. Um, and nursing is our number one most competitive major here at San Diego State University. Now we are an impacted school. So what that means is year over year, we always receive more applications than seats available. So there isn't going to be an easier major to apply to that will increase your chances. So I always like to tell my students, you know, apply to the major that you would like to pursue. If you have no idea what type of major you want to pursue at the time of applying, you can apply as an undeclared major. Uh, you are not looked at any differently and that does not hurt your application. Now, some important dates. Our application goes live October 1st through November 30th. Since we are a California State University school, we will not be a part of the Common App. We have our own application system. So you will apply at calstate.edu. Um, admission decisions will be released in March. And then of course, May 1 is the national intent to enroll deadline. So you do have some time. Now in alliance, or excuse me, me in alignment with the California State University system uh, for incoming students for the fall 2022 term, we will not require or consider the SAT or ACT as a part of the application process. Now for freshman admission, what we do look at is your grade point average with these A through G course subjects between your 10th, 11th, and 12th grade year. We look at your freshman year as a transitional year. 
We will weight your um, GPA up to eight semesters. So if you've taken any honors, AP, dual enrollment, or IB courses, we will award you extra points onto your GPA. Uh, we do want you to maintain your overall grade point average through your senior year. Um, this is very important because we will ask for your report card to make sure you, that you are still admissible. Now, all of your grades are self-reported on the application. We do not ask for, for an official transcript when we review your application. So the best recommendation I can give you is make sure that you have a copy of your transcript out when you are reporting um, your grades and courses on the application. If you need help, that's what our admissions office is here for. So please feel free to reach out to us and we will be happy to assist you. Now again, with our student involvement, we have over 350 student organizations on campus, 46 um, different fraternities and sororities, academic and social for Greek life. We have our associated student government body. Um, in addition, there are many things that our students are a part of like our Aztec mentoring program, where you work with our career services department and you're teamed up with an SDSU alumni in the career field you would like to pursue, and they're your mentor. We have our Arts of Life program. Maybe you're a business major, but you still want to do choir or you wanna get involved in our painting program. You can be a part of the Arts of Life program. We have our Mission Bay Aquatic Center, which is about 10 minutes away from campus. Uh, we team up with also University of California, San Diego, so UCSD and USD um, in regards to holding different water classes. Uh, yes, you can get a credit for paddleboard yoga um, or sailing, or maybe you want to go down with some friends and rent some kayaks at a student discount. You can do that too. Uh, we have a bowling alley on campus and it's free for students. We also have our Aztec Recreation Center and our Aquaplex, which is the state-of-the-art gym on campus for our students as well. Um, housing, we do require non-local freshmen that they have to live on campus for the first two years. Uh, so yes, you are required and have guaranteed housing. We have seen our students who live on campus for the first two years tend to have an 11 to 13% higher GPAs. Of course, we have affordable and convenient meal plans with over 30 different dining locations on campus. Uh, we do have a Trader Joe's on campus and our students love that. You can't use your meal plan there, but it's still very busy with students coming in and out. No commute. Um, freshmen cannot bring cars on campus, but as I mentioned, we have our public transportation system stopped directly on campus. We are a very Uber and Lyft friendly city, having um, actually designated Uber and Lyft pickup stations in front of our residential halls as well. And then, of course, you know, building those close knit friendships um, and a strong support network, which is great. Now, um, we do also love our sports. We had a great football game uh, this past Saturday against University of Utah, uh, which ended up with a win for us, which is fantastic. But we love our sports. All of our students that are admitted um, attend our sports games, our home games for free. And then maybe if you would like to play a sport, we also have our intramural and club sports listed on the slide. Now, for those of you that maybe want to reach out for more information or a virtual tour, this is our contact information. I will go ahead and put it in the chat as well. Uh, thank you for attending tonight. All right, good evening and War Eagle, everybody. My name is Clayton Ann Short, and I am the admissions or freshman admissions advisor um, for Auburn University for uh, Maryland, DC, and Virginia, along with Connecticut and Illinois. Um, a little bit about Auburn. We are a large institution located in the southeast area of Alabama. Um, we are in Auburn, Alabama, about 30 minutes from the Georgia border about an hour and a half from Atlanta. Typically our students will fly out of the Atlanta airport if they're going home or to various areas. Um, we do have shuttles that take our students to and from campus about 14 trips a day. So you'll have a lot of opportunities to get to and from the airport. We do allow students to have cars on campus from freshman to senior year. They have designated parking lots based off of where you live. But you see we're in a great location in the southeast, about three hours from the Gulf Coast beaches, three hours from um, the mountains in Tennessee and North Georgia, and no more than two hours from two larger metropolitan areas as well. Auburn is a college town, so the big thing in Auburn is the university. So if you are looking for a full collegiate experience where you are surrounded by students your own age, that is Auburn's campus. Like I said, we are large. We have about 30,000 students in total enrollment. Our undergraduate population is about 25,000. And then our freshman class typically falls around 5,000 students. 
Um, we typically stay about 55% in-state students, 45% um, out-of-state. You can see our large feeder states listed here, um, but we do cover all 50 states and over 100 countries are represented on campus. So geographically, our students are coming from all over. Um, it does bring a really cool experience geographically, people coming from all over to create a great campus life. Our students are very involved. We have a lot of different opportunities to plug in. Um, you can see 550 plus student organizations, everything from leadership opportunities like SGA and different program councils to intramural and club sports, Greek life, cultural organizations, religious organizations. Um, so a lot to get involved with. Um, and a lot of our students do. So over 19,000 of our students are involved in at least one campus organization. So that's getting involved in plugging in, but we are known for the Auburn family. And part of how we create this um, family environment is through our traditions. That's what bring us closer together. So whether that's hanging out at Tumor's Corner and having our world famous lemonade um, or rolling Tumor's Corner with toilet paper after an Auburn victory um, or watching the pregame Eagle flight right before an Auburn kickoff. There's a lot that makes your campus life very unique. But the reason you guys are Going to college is for the academic side. We have 12 colleges and schools, over 150 majors, so a lot to choose from. I can really attest to a lot of our programs. I changed my major four times while I was at Auburn, tried them all out for y'all, they're great. Um, but we're well known for um, STEM degrees, so the College of Science and Mathematics, um, as well as focused in pre-med and nursing, um, the College of Engineering, as well as business. So those are our larger college, but we're ranked in every field of study. So no matter what you want to do, you can't go wrong. These are all really wonderful programs. Um, we do also have a major that allows our students to begin undecided through our exploratory program, where you take core classes and an intro class once a week, where you take interest quizzes and personality tests to kind of give you an idea of what you may be interested in. Um, you're able to shadow classes and talk to faculty members and students in majors that you're interested in before you actually have to pick something. So each of these different programs have websites. I highly encourage you to go check them out. You can also go to auburn.edu slash majors to see a list of all that we offer. A little bit of more of the academic side um, of our freshman class for admissions last year. This is the middle 50%. We don't have a minimum requirement to receive admissions to Auburn, not to say that every student who applies will be accepted. Um, so this is competitive ranges. This is where the majority of our students fell last year. So again, um, our freshman class, 25% of them were above this range, 25% were below. So this was the bulk. Um, so for the application process this year, it is already available. It opened August 1st. And um, we have two routes for our students to apply. So we have our traditional application. You can find us on the common application or on our website. Um, if you are applying traditional, um, we'll need again, your application along with a fee, unless you're eligible for a fee waiver, which if you think you are, you can reach out to me. Um, you just need to upload a copy of your unofficial transcript. And then we also need your ACT or SAT scores. We do accept super score. Um, these do have to be sent directly from the testing agency. Now, if you have a minimum of a 3.6 weighted GPA and you weren't able to take the ACT or SAT, you can um, apply test optional, and we're just going to need your application along with the fee and your high school transcript. And then you can see our dates and deadlines here. So we have three rounds of early action and one round of regular decision. The big difference between um, early action and regular decision is scholarships. So you are automatically considered for our freshman scholarships um, if you apply within and are accepted within early action. So you just need to apply by December 1st. But you can see when you'll hear a decision from us. We just want to be as transparent as possible for you guys of when you'll hear back from us. These are our tuition and fees for our non-resident students. These are general tuition and fees. There can be some additional fees with certain majors. So you can head over to our cost calculator to get a better idea of what your more personalized number will look like. Um, but with scholarship opportunities, 61% um, of our freshmen are awarded a scholarship. You can scan this QR code and it'll take you to our freshman scholarships along with um, those merit-based um, and achievement scholarships so you can get a better idea of your estimated award amounts based on your academic achievement. Um, but this is my contact information, my email, my phone number, and again, another QR code. You can scan it to get some more information. Um, from us, but come visit us on campus. We are hosting tours, but thank you guys for joining us tonight. We're happy um, to spend some time with y'all. War Eagle.
happens once in a while. I always forget to unmute. Thank you so much to all of our presenters for presenting for us this evening and sharing um, their fantastic schools that they each represent. It looks like we have about four minutes left together. So I have a question that I am going to pose to each of our presenters um, to share just a little bit of additional information for you. We'll go through in the order that everyone presented. So we'll start off with Arizona State and work our way through all of our colleges. So to all of our college representatives, what is one piece of advice that you would give to someone going through the college admission process? All right, so I think um, a big thing I always like to tell students, especially this time of year, is to start having that finances conversation early. Have it with parents or whoever, if anyone's helping you finance this um, education, have it with your college reps get a really clear, realistic idea of what your financial responsibility might be. So there's no surprises um, as we get a little bit closer to the start of classes. So financial fits super, super important, especially if you're looking at out of state. So have those transparent conversations really early on. Breathe first of all. Uh, and then second, I would say uh, a lot of us, as you've seen this evening, are in your time zone, in your area. Do not hesitate to connect with us. We are employed by our institutions to be where you are and meet you where you are. And I think it's so important to take advantage of that, especially since we're so used to being in this virtual space. Um, and a lot of us are going back out on the road. So look at our schedules, make sure if we're coming to your school that you meet us um, and just have that connection and experience because it's coming back. Um, we just had our first day back in person today after so many months uh, at UCR. So that's, that's my advice for you. So one thing I always like to share with students is you know, no matter how many schools you apply to where, make sure you go to the one that fits the best for you. Um, as you saw today, there are plenty of amazing colleges, plenty of awesome universities. And of course, we would all love you to come to our school. But at the end of the day, you really need to choose what is just for you, whether that is a specific program, if that's a financial need, or if it's just sometimes it's just a gut feeling. If you kind of looked at everything logically, and then at the end of the day, sometimes you do have to just see what is the best fit for me in the long term. So that's usually what I tell students. And then just second, really quickly, is again, you know, college is expensive and especially out of state, but just know that there is a lot of funding available, uh, both for a lot of colleges within and even external as well. So if you need help, um, yeah, as Ashley mentioned, please reach out to admissions counselor. A lot of colleges also have scholarship advisors. So there are resources out there. You just have to be a bit more proactive and just reach out if you need help. One piece of advice that I always give students is to talk to the current students on campus. Uh, if there's a way to do that virtually, um, or if you're on campus for a tour, ask the students who are there and living that experience what it's like. Because we all as admissions counselors have great information for you, but I like to think it hasn't been that long since I've been to college. It's been a while. So talk to the students who've been there and are in their shoes right then and there, right? And hear what that experience is like right then and right now, um, because I think they have such a valuable perspective and they'll get excited from that. And I think students love talking about their experience as well. So don't feel like it's a burden to ask those questions. Definitely continue to ask them and, and make sure to ask them of current students too. You know, I would say ask, ask questions. It's a pretty general thing of advice, but we're all here to answer the questions that you may have. That is our job. Um, and we love to help you and, and find, help you find, you know, navigate the right fit for you. So don't be afraid to ask questions um, for anything. And also don't wait till the last minute. You, you saw there are tons of different admission deadlines. Um, we deal with a lot of students coming from everywhere. So the earlier you can get in your application or speak to us addressing your concern or maybe that question about your major, reach out to us. We are here to help you guys be successful. And because we're like very close to time, I'll just quickly say, um, just like everybody said, keeping your options open, I always say get just a blank, empty calendar, color code it, and put in everybody's dates and deadlines just to keep your options open. Because later down the line, if you missed a scholarship deadline, and having that, like Sarah said, realistic conversation about the finances 
if you miss it, that's not keeping your options open. So I always say, as the person who loves organizing, put everything on a calendar based off the colors and make sure you keep those opportunities there. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you much for so much for joining us today. Um, students, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very, very quick five question survey. So any uh, feedback that you are willing to provide us, we greatly appreciate. Um, we also encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions today. Um, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash P-C-A-C-A-C. Thank you so much. And thank you again to our presenters. Everyone have a wonderful day.